Yes, assalamu alaikum, Ramadan Karim. I would like to thank you for this. I will continue in English. Uh, I will try to be uh, very short, uh, hopefully 10 minutes, 15 minutes, like you are uh, advising. And uh, I will be ready, of course, to answer questions. So as uh, Karwan was mentioning, uh, we are a very large company, as you can see, $50 billion. Uh, we deliver, uh, we distribute uh, the all kind of IT uh, solutions, and I am responsible for the cybersecurity. So that's probably the only uh, business part of all my uh, presentation. All the rest will be uh, uh, more about uh, the cyber security and uh, the cyber crime. So I was listening to the uh, presentation. I was listening to the very valuable uh, uh, speakers. And uh, I wanted to uh, just go quite uh, fast, but importantly, on why we do cyber security. Because there is a cyber crime and we want to uh, protect ourselves from the bad guys. And this is obvious, but it is always important to, un to remember it and to understand it. Some people are attacking us the same way that uh, we can be attacked uh, in the street, but here it is cyber. But who are these bad guys? We need to understand very uh, carefully uh, who are the bad guys that need to attack us so we can protect ourselves the best way. And for this, for instance, this table that you can see on the screen uh, has been done by uh, my team of consultants. There is, uh, on the left side, you have the list of uh, kind of hackers and how they are organized. From the highest one to the lowest, they have different motives, targets, and they have resources or very less resources if you go down. So you can see the, the, where you are, where your business is, where your organization is, and how they can be targeted and with which resources. Of course, if you are a, a state, if you are a, a, a state, you will be much more vulnerable and you need to protect yourself much more than a company or than an individual. And this is the reason why we established this, uh, this table to see from nation states that are targeting uh, other states, terrorists, uh, organized crime, vandals and activists, and how the money and the resources they have to achieve their targets. Once you know this, you can understand easily that there is something uh, we, we call dark web. And in the dark web, there are a lot of bad things that are circulating. There is a market behind it, as you can see, fake passports, contrabands, a lot of substance and drugs are available. Everything is, of course, hidden, but accessible by these hackers. They can even, uh, you can even buy, if you are a hacker, an account, credential of an account, so you can do your uh, crime, your cyber crime. And similarly, of course, you can buy a credit card from the dark web, to, 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 to make a, a fraudulent payment or uh, anything uh, similar. So this is from the picture side. I want now to uh, go into the deep topic of today is how can we defend ourselves? How can we be structured, uh, think in a structured way to defend ourselves? So here I, am, I might be a little bit... Uh, Technical, so I'm sorry for that, uh, but uh, definitely it is something uh, important to think about it. So uh, you will see uh, some of the IT information on the next slide. So, what are the components of cybersecurity? Uh, there is something we call endpoint security, which is the antivirus that you have on your laptop, on your PC. That's a, a software. We have firewalls, can be software and hardware. We have a VPN. We mentioned in the presentation a lot about VPN because we do e-learning and we want to protect the connections. We have what we call IPS. We have what we call DLP, Data Liquid Protection. 
we have a web security, we have email security, and we have many others. All these are uh, solutions, are software, are tools that are sold by companies that are very reputable across the world. But if we implement only this technology, we can probably reach 60% of protection. And that's the, the traditional approach. Anybody in, uh, in any country, in any company, thinks first about this so they can achieve more than half of the protection of, of the shield uh, for cybersecurity. Now, what can we do more? As I said, the, as you can guess from my conversation here, is that this is only the visible par part of the iceberg. If you want to be really protected and reach this 100% of security, you need to do more. So how do you do more? When you implement all these tools in your uh, network, in your environment, you need to make sure that all these tools are, uh, are, are doing their job, which means they are doing the right uh, protection for their purpose. The firewall is working the right way, the VPN working the right way, not having any vulnerabilities. So what you are going to do, you are going to add what we call a SIM. A SIM is a security uh, information and event manager. manager. So this is a server that is collecting information from all these elements that you just implemented in your network. And he is looking at all the incidents all the list of uh, events that are happening, okay? These events might be uh, 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 an alert in the email that there is a phishing email, or it can be an intrusion on the, uh, on the laptop from the endpoint security. So all these are listed in a, in a list of events, and there will be a need of what we call the threat intelligence uh, feeds that are a collection, a dictionary somehow, of uh, all the incidents that are happening across the world to make sure that you are sorting out all these events. You put them into a dashboard. You use some tools, some people that are expert in analyzing these events, and you create the Security Operation Center, SOC. This is the basic of the enhanced approach for cybersecurity. So you see, we have reached two layers of cybersecurity now. The very basic and traditional, where you reach probably 50, 60% of security. But if you analyze all the alerts and all the incidents that are happening in your uh, shield, you probably reach 80, 90% of your security. You are curious now to say why it is not the, the total, because you need to add a few additional things. If your business is very sensitive, if you are a state or you are a, a, a very sensitive organization, you can implement what we call the incident response. If you are attacked, if you have a breach, your uh, uh, processes are implemented in the way that you can immediately contain this attack. By, by using this incident response, tools, people, resources, material, and, 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 and real life activities. And this can be also done by an external company or organization that has itself a security operation center and delivering you this support, the enhanced approach remotely. And this is what we call SOC as a service. So you all don't have the SOC yourself, but you, you buy it or you get it from a, a sister company or a sister organization or another ministry or any other uh, uh, body from the, from, the, from the state. So by doing this incident response, you enhance even more. And you, we are now probably a 90, 90% of security of our organization. Now, how can we reach the Graal? How can we go to the 100% or maybe 99, 99.9%? So we need to do what we call the threat hunting. So that uh, can be automated, but it is mainly manual. It's mainly with the resources, with people, with the trained and the certified. Uh, they, are, they would be creating traps, infiltrating uh, some of the hackers group, anticipating somehow the attacks because they do intelligence about the uh, attack scenarios. 
And this is what is currently available in the market that is called MDR, Managed Detection and Response. So it's in a somehow an offensive defense or offensive security. And this will guarantee to you and to your organization the utmost, the very, very high security that you can have. And it is the best that can happen today in the market. So now we saw all these uh, different levels that will help uh, implementing the right cybersecurity uh, uh, response uh, in your uh, organization. Uh, let me just take it quickly on the other hand as well, because we saw it from technology probably, we saw it also from, uh, uh, from uh, implementation, from uh, uh, more uh, technique. But we can also say that there is also a support of a human being of skills of people to make sure that when you implement in your organization the cybersecurity, you are bringing the right training. This is the first uh, uh, arrow that you can see here. The right tools. This is the second arrow, making sure that you also measure at the same time your progress and your implementation of cybersecurity. The consultancy, the solutioning, adapting it to your business. Uh, making uh, the right implementation and also having the right managed security service uh, to your organization. N needless to say that this is uh, more about human, more about people, more about resources and services to your cybersecurity. You cannot just implement the security tools, the security software and hardware and say, I am done. I am done. You need to have these permanent reviews that you can see on the screen um, uh, in front of you. Now I would like just to go uh, quickly and I will finish with that about what would what needs more practically to be the response, the requirement to have the best security. So uh, you need always to think when you implement a security in an organization, you need to think people, process and technology. If you think only technology, you will be missing always something. So you need to add to it the processes that you have inside your organization, how many times you change password, how, many, how, how a new employee or a new student or a new user is getting an, an account on the system, uh, how often you, how fast you delete an account and so on and so forth. People, the uh, management of your organization needs to be aware about cybersecurity. By the way, we are doing awareness currently by doing this event. This event is an awareness event for people. So we are addressing people. And then when you implement your product and solution as a technology, you would have address it holistically. Now, more precisely, how people process technology can contain solution. I will not go into the technology on the right side where you see a lot of names. I'm sure you know them. These are technology and it's good to have, it's must to have, but also you need also to do assessment, as I mentioned to you, consultancy, managed services, to make sure that your processes are uh, up-to-date and used and useful. People, you need always to give training. You need to think about the privacy training of your users, of the management, and sometimes certification trainings. So you have the response here on all the security aspects, people, process, technology. Here is more detail. I'm not going to go through the full list, but just to show you that there are a lot of trainings that can be done in different packages. Uh, certification is very important for a professional. Privacy also very important. This is, I can skip this slide because this is uh, explaining how a security operations center can work. And this is what Ingram Micro is proposing. All our uh, uh, security uh, support is coming from uh, security operation centers in every part of the globe, as you can see, Europe, uh, UAE, uh, India, and Pakistan. So here is uh, the, the detail of these uh, services that needs to be always rendered on an existing infrastructure. Technical assessment, the famous penetration testing and vulnerability assessments are part of it, but also consultancy. You need always to have this consultancy on your governance, risk and compliance, GRC, it's well known, to make sure that your processes are in place. 
And you need also to think about your managed security service that is uh, looking after your functioning of security shield 24 by 7. Uh, this is a way to say in this slide that uh, when you implement technology, you need to uh, put the limits between where is the risk. As you can see here, uh, the uh, red uh, uh, circle is the one uh, is the one that is at high risk. You have the uh, your DMZ uh, at, that is at less risk, and you have also your data later. So always having a segregation into your network is very important for your security. Then once, once you have this segregation, it's easy for you to think about which solution you need to implement and where and for which purpose. This is a detailed view of the security, uh, 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 let's say, domains and solutions. So I'm done. I just want to uh, tell you that uh, you have here the number and the email of uh, .future. You have also Ingram Micro Twitter, uh, Ingram Micro uh, YouTube and uh, website. We are uh, always ready to support you uh, through that uh, future. And I'm happy to uh, get any question and answer. Thanks, Mr. Mark. Thank you very much for your demonstration. Really, it's a nice demonstration. Um, I ask you, uh, before others, I suppose see uh, statistics of evaluation done for organization, co cooperation with your organization. So I never see to, it's very important for us to see the factors which are using in evaluation uh, in the final, meaning the, the factors which are you depend on to evaluate it, the organization. So, yeah, this is a very good question. Thank you for, for it. So, uh, basically, you there are probably two or three categories of evaluation that we do. You remember my slide about people, process, and technology. Mm -hmm. This is basically the evaluation that we do, meaning that we do penetration testing, we do vulnerability assessment to make sure that the technology mm -hmm. is not vulnerable, or if it is, how to improve it. That's the evaluation that we do. The, we do a gap analysis, we, go, we do a risk assessment, that's to make sure that the processes are compliant with a given standard or given, given framework, and there is no gap and how to improve this, uh, this, uh, these gaps. And we do also evaluation of people, their knowledge about, um, about security and do they need awareness. So we have the combination of these three different evaluations that we do so we can improve the security posture of a given organization. Did, did I answer correctly your question? Uh, you are, uh, uh, again, you put it some demonstration in, uh, I, I asking about uh, statistics, meaning if you do something, uh, evaluation for organization uh, before, uh, how many, uh, universities or organizations uh, okay. are doing for them, etc. Okay, so I have to say that uh, unfortunately in the region we don't do enough evaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, if I need to give you some numbers, I would say that in uh, in other regions, uh, Europe, US, uh, the uh, large organizations, the uh, uh, mid-sized organization are doing probably uh, one evaluation uh, per quarter, uh, once per year for the processes. These are the ISO certification, for instance, and aud aud ISO auditing. Uh, so there are some uh, levels that are on quarterly basis and others are on yearly basis. And these evaluations are continuously done. And of course, I don't even mention those monitoring that are happening 24 by 7, these are evaluation of the technology permanently. This is my, my SIM and SOC that I showed you uh, in my presentation earlier. So uh, there is a permanent steps of this evaluation. I would say uh, in a safe uh, situation, once a quarterly, you need to do uh, uh, an evaluation. If you cannot afford it because it has, it has a cost as well, uh, and, 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 and it, it, it uh, mobilizes some resources. You can do it twice a year, 
but uh, the the more you do it per year, per, per the shorter period you do it, the more up to up to date you are in your organization and your uh, shield. Excuse Thanks me, Mark. Mr. Mac. Thank you for the nice lecture and the nice information. Uh, do you have a success story in the educational sector? For example, you've done an evaluation for a university you can share with us? Yes, I think my team has done uh, something here in the UAE. I can, uh, I can uh, share it through uh, uh, the future, definitely. Uh, we can, uh, we can uh, let just, uh, I take note of it and I will give you, uh, I will give you this uh, information uh, in a couple of days. Thank you, thank you, we're waiting. But I, will, uh, I would like to add something that uh, if you allow me to be completely transparent, I have to say that uh, probably not universities, but uh, schools, uh, primary, secondary schools, are not the best uh, protected. And uh, I remember last year, 2019, we had a lot of re requests for ransomware attacks in schools in the region. And you cannot imagine the number of ransomwares where the schools has been uh, completely locked. All the d data of the schools has been completely locked by hackers asking for money. And we had to jump in uh, to try to recover the situation with my teams and uh, and having probably. So the in this case, and I would, if I have to give a, a solution here, we need always to think, to remember that we need to have backups of all the data we have. Where, wherever they are, we need to have a backup. So there is a strategy, different level of strategy that can go up to the uh, disaster planning as well. But this is uh, uh, very, very important to avoid. And, and the, probably the primary and the secondary school are the, the most uh, poor in the region in terms of uh, security, I would say. We have simple disaster recovery procedure in our university, but I cannot say we are really protected. استاذ عصام اذا امكن اكو اسئله اخرى حتى نستغل الوقت. اخوان اذا اكو اي شخص يحب يسال لطفا يرفع ايده. I think Karwan uh, Karwan wants to say something. Yes. Karwan. Hi. Can you hear me, Mr. Mark? Yes, I can hear you very well. Uh, I just want to ask, I hope that you are fine. Uh, I'm going to ask about the most uh, simple steps to get protect our accounts on educational account on Google or Moodle, etc. That you advised. I might be very surprising, but uh, for me, the the best way, and I take it from my my proper experience. I have accounts everywhere, as you can see, uh, as you can know, uh, on social media or any any other accounts, and uh, there are so many. The best protection is the common sense, is that you would, you stay alerted all the time. Do you receive the email from the, from the person that you are expecting an email from? Uh, and is this uh, email address is the right one that you know about the, the email you received, if it is an email? Uh, if it is another uh, an account, you change password permanently. When you have, uh, when you uh, stay long time without connection with an account, just refresh and, and change it. So it's it, for me the best advices are the basic ones. Don't uh, try to look at a very complex uh, protection. Just be alerted. Yeah. Know that you are always attacked and you are always. Okay. Vulnerable. I just have another question. If you have a little time. Yes, you can. Please go. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to ask about your vision to cybersecurity in Iraq. What do you see for us? Look, I think I think you have uh, you have a lot to do. Uh, not only uh, because you are a large country, but also because you have a very valuable resources like the oil, for instance, and many others. But that's, that's enough uh, for you as a country to, to, to have a, a, a proper strategy in the cybersecurity and having a protection. Of course, not only at government, government level. Government will always have his policies and his rules and his development investment, but also companies, also educational system. Every single uh, organization 
needs to have this in mind. And not, not because you are in the education and the oil is uh, a different uh, industry that you need you don't need to protect you never know because there are the tides are very very uh, very close in between industries and somebody who wants to attack the the the, the oil industry might go through the education you, you never you never know so for me uh, iraq is uh, is definitely uh, in, in a good position to have its policy and to have this uh, uh, this uh, strategy implemented and they have the good reason to do it and uh, and maybe, inshallah, they have enough money as well to do it. We hope so. So thanks, Mr. Mark. So thanks. I'm really happy to listen to you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Karwan, please. Yes. Uh, yes, OK. So I just wanted to add two things, actually, for, the, uh, for this lady who asked the question. One, one more simple thing to add to preserve the accounts, I do suggest is if the account is to have the dual factor authentication, is to always add, you know, your mobile to be there to receive extra digits and then enter that when you are entering in your new system. So this is a, a one a good way to be protected. So, I mean, whatever accounts you are using, majority of them, they do support dual factor authentication. Uh, as a good practice, I really do suggest everyone to, if there is there to enable it, if this, to, is this functionality is there to enable, because in this way, it's a lot of people, they can uh, know some information about you. They try to recover your email address, your account using this other information, but they cannot go your, get your GSM number. So that's the good thing. They cannot log in, to in, uh, they cannot access to your account by trying to do the social engineering around it. So it's always good to enable that dual factor authentication. And one more thing uh, regarding, you know, uh, as a system integrator, we have deployed a lot of, uh, you know, security solution in terms of endpoint solutions, firewalls, email security, web security. Trust me, we have done all of those for our customers, okay? But I have always seen there is a missing part in Iraq we are not doing, which is, uh, which is the, the, the SOC part, the security intelligence part, the threat hunting part, which usually we, we have not done it. And we don't have, it. believe me, no companies in Iraq, they have the resources. Nobody has it, okay? And I have not seen it from, I'm not sure, I'm not speaking for uh, Iraqi government, but I'm here, I'm speaking for Kurdistan government. Sorry, so, Kevin, uh, we, we, we have a honeypot, uh, a virtual honeypot in our university. Sometimes we, we use it with the students. That's good. That's really good. But that's what I'm saying. In Kurdistan, I have not seen it. So, which is, that's why I mean, my our approach to partnership with Ingram, they already, they are ready because one of the things for this, it is also, it is, it's not, a, it's, it's, it's about lacking of resources, you know, to have the, the talent here, the, 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 the certified people, like, who can do the SOC analyst people. So, we are lacking. So, we have partnership with them, and uh, we hopefully in the future we will be able to bring one one sock here in the region to have it and to train people here and to have the right talent and people to do the things in inside Iraq because there are yeah. also you know a lot of policies uh, inside the government there will be like your data should not go outside the country so we will be eventually needing to have those uh, to establish the stock here in in in. Era. We hope so too. It's very, very important, especially for the governmental level. It's very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank so you, Kevin. We have Thank those you. things in mind, to be frank. Thank you. Thank you. There is the next, please, Mr. Isam. Aku Ahad again. Nagam, Nagam, Sit Nagam Farwat. Okay, Niktifi Bhada Kada. Niktifi Bhada Kada. Dr. Shiller Ali, Afu. Dr. Shiller. Shiller. Dr. Shiller Ali. Okay. Niktifi Bhada Kada. Dr. Shukran Tfadda. Shukran Jazeelan. Niktifi Bhada Kada. Ronin Ruhila Al Akhar. Thanks very, thank you again. Thank you for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.
خلينا نشوف اللي بعد الدكتور عصام